part, the next thing we've got to get to. Okay? We did mass mass yesterday. If you look, I loaded both of those videos, and you've got to look at those videos. Understood? They're the last two I loaded. And I explain, I explained at the end of the second video what it was exactly that we were doing. If I said what we were doing before the video, it wouldn't have made any sense, but it should make sense now. I'm going to do the next one, the next step in this, okay? Now, for this one, you need gases, okay? And I'm also going to explain something else that I didn't explain in the first three videos. Let's say... Is that up, up there? Is that all up there? Yes? Okay. Now, um, does this make sense to you? What I just wrote on the board, does it make sense? Right? I take yeah. nitrogen. Anything that's written as a gas, diatomic. Big mistake students make. Look at a periodic table. Hydrogen, look at a periodic table. Look at your book, back page. Look at a periodic table. Hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, chlorine, bromine, iodine. Fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. If they're gas, they're written diatomically. Understood? H2. O2, N2, what else? Um, F2, Cl2, Br2, I2. Right? Okay. Diatonic. Okay, now. So big mistake. You see this one, you see these in parentheses? These are conditions. What's the name of this equation? What's the name of a complete balanced formula equation containing conditions? Stoichiometric. Will somebody please call an ambulance? Her throat is closing. Stoichiometric, equ Stoichiometric equation. Excellent. Well done, Lauren. I know, it's the toughest word in chemistry to say. Okay, so it's a complete balanced formula equation with conditions. Conditions are very important. Now, we didn't put conditions in the last two videos, but let me do that really quickly, just to, just to emphasize these Gs, okay? Now, I, the second equation I used on the second video, and maybe even the first video, I had lead to nitrate plus sodium iodide yields sodium, I think I put it this way, sorry. I think I said lead iodide, lead to iodide plus sodium nitrate. Didn't I say that? Right? Yes? Now look at what's not here. Look at what's not here. Conditions. Let me balance it. This is aqueous. In other words, it's in solution form. What does aqueous mean? Agua. Agua. Aqueous. Water solution. Okay? This is also... Aqueous, right? This is something different. Let me erase this just to make room. Okay. Is that on there, Lauren? Is that on the whole thing? Uh, yes, it is still recording. Excellent. No, is it? Is this cut off? No, it's not. Okay. So that's going to be two. And this 
is what they call a precipitate. I'm going to do that for you today, by the way. Precipitate is solid, and you put a down arrow. Okay, and this one is aqueous. Okay, reactants, products. Reactants, products. Clear? Conditions. Those are the conditions. Yes? You have the right conditions, absolutely. Absolutely. Get used to it. Let me just be consistent with my notation here. So what's a precipitate mean? It falls out of solution. You will know what I mean by precipitate when I do the demonstration. It'll be obvious. Are we going to require covered shoes for this demonstration? Excuse me? Are we going to require covered shoes for this demonstration? Are we going to what? Covered shoes, like... No, no, I'm doing it. You're not doing it. I'm okay. just, it's okay. Okay. All right, got it? You understand? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, now. Remember we said, write this down. Write this down. The volume of one mole of gas at STP equals 22.4 liters, or 22.4 cubic decimeters, same thing. One mole of any, and I mean any gas, is 22.4 liters. Cubic decimeters. Okay? Understood? Yes or no? Yes. Okay, good. Is that okay? Okay. Now, for gas equation, we have to work with volumes as well as masses. So I want you to put in your stoichiometric volumes and your stoichiometric masses. Okay? So, now remember, this is one mole, three moles, two moles, correct? What's the mass of one mole of nitrogen? Get a marker. What's the mass of one mole blue? Blue, blue spade shoes. Blue, blue. What is it? 28. 28 grams, excellent. 28 grams. How about three moles of hydrogen? Three. What is it? Three. Six. Oh, wait, six. Oh, you got that right, girl. Uh -huh. Right? And then this? Can you add? 34. 34, there you go. Okay, got it? What's the volume of one mole of nitrogen? This is all at STP, guys. Uh, 22.4 liters yeah. slash cubic decimeters. Cubic decimeters, same thing. Okay. The IB uses cubic decimeters. That's just news. That's, I don't use do cubic decimeters. I use liters. Okay. What's three times 22.4? Sixty-seven point two. And what about two times twenty-two point four? Okay. Easy. Yes or no? Easy. Okay. Okay. If I have, if I have um, sixty-seven point two liters of nitrogen, how many liters of hydrogen do I have? Three. No. How many liters? Oh. If I have 
67.2 liters of this, how many liters of this do I have? Are you calculating the missile trajectory for Big Bertha bombing Paris during World War I? What are you doing? That was an awful lot of calculations. What's 3 times 67.2? 201.6. What is it? 201.6. Right? What about this? Will you, will you please stop having a good time? This is chemistry. You're supposed to be sad. Happiness is not an option. Thank you. What's this? 89.6. What is it? I thought it was 134.4. What's 44 times 3, girl? 44. 134.4. What is it? 134.4. Yeah, wait, that's what I said. I didn't hear you, Lauren. Okay. That's fine. Okay, easy? Yes. So we don't times it by two. Because if I told you times by two. You're using proportional relationships. That's what I'm trying to get across to you. In other words, I multiply, how did I get 67.2, Ling Ling? Um, you times 2.4 by two. Yeah, because that's one mole. So I multiply this by three. I multiply this by 3, I multiply this by 3. Right? That's all I'm doing, right? Isn't it? Yes. No, no, no. It's a very good question. It's a very good question. In other words, let me erase this. Ling Ling has a good question. Well, wait a second. What was the question you thought? Um, I thought it was the times the 3. The two. Times it by the 3 or the 2 or the 1? Okay. This is my point. In other words, look, Ling Ling, we're comparing mole mole, right? Right? It's not the same as mass mass, right? Yeah. In other words, we're saying nitrogen compared to hydrogen, right? What's the relationship? It's a mole relationship, isn't it? It's one to three, isn't it? Yes? If one mole is 22.4, what's 3 moles? 67.2. In other words, look. 67.2, uh, right? Right? And that's how we got this. Right? 1 to 3. Correct? Yes or no? Yes. Okay, good. Now, if I said this instead, if I said, well, wait a second, the volume ratio is 22.4 to 67.2, right, liters, right? Right? So if this is, if this is 67.2, what's that? Cross, multiply, and divide. I'm looking for the volume of hydrogen. Right? No? Weird? Okay, but look. Look. If I have one mole, it's 22.4. Right? If I have three moles, it's 67.2. Fair? Right? Because the mass... The volume of one mole is 22.4 of any gas. So what's the volume of three moles? No, 67.2. No, Ling Ling, let me rip this apart and do it over. Okay, just listen to each question. Don't look at the, any of this problem. I'm going to rip the problem apart and I'm going to start over. Are you ready? Okay. The volume of one mole of gas is 22.4 liters. True or false? True or false? The volume of one mole of gas, STP, we're going to talk about STP, but I'll write this second, is 22.4. That's just a definition. 
That's all that is. It's a definition. Okay? One mole of any gas has a volume of 22.4 liters. Do you understand that? Good. Right? One mole, right? 22.4. What's the volume of three moles of that gas? Of any gas. Three times 22.4, right? Three moles, right? What's the volume of two moles of a gas? 44.8, correct? Now, if 22.4 moles is compared to 67.2 moles, right? For every 22.4 moles of this gas I consume, I must use 67.2, I'm sorry, for every 22.4 liters of this gas I consume, I must consume 67.2 liters of this gas, right? All right, so instead of 22.4 liters, I have 67.2 liters, right? So 22.4 is to 67.2 as 67.2 is to what? Proportional relationship. 22.4 is to 67.2 as 67.2 is to x. That's all I did. Right? That's all I did. Yes or no? Okay, good. Yes, can I erase this? Now, I did the same thing, Ling Ling, to this one. Let me erase this. Okay? Again, constant ratios, right? Constant ratio. So in other words, I'm going to compare nitrogen with ammonia. Nitrogen. Ammonia. Okay? You with me? Okay. 22.4 is the 44.8. as 67.2 is to x. Solve that proportional relation, Ling Ling, right now. Take out your calculator. You don't have one. That's big. It's huge. You've got to have a calculator. What is it? It's NH3 a gas. Yes, it's ammonia. Yes, it's a gas. Oh, sorry. Nice assist. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, ammonia at room temperature. At SDP. Where the ammonia was used in cleaning Ammonium hydroxide. Mm -hmm. If you take ammonia and you bubble it into water, it makes ammonium hydroxide. Ammonia is one of the most soluble gases we know of, naturally occurring gases. Well. What are some other ones? Hmm? What are some other ones? Oxygen, carbon dioxide, mm -hmm. carbon monoxide, hydrogen. Yes? Um, so, is 3 like a fixed number? Yeah. I can't hear you. Is it like a fixed number of No. Of no. Just gas. Yep. And there's a reason for that. But when I point to you someday soon, you're going to ask me that question. Okay? It's a very important question. What do we get, Ling Ling? It's 194.4. Okay? Easy? Simple, right? Now let's say that this call this line is volume. Okay? Let's make this line moles. Right? How many moles are here? How many moles are on that line? How many moles? How many moles does sixty-seven point two liters of nitrogen represent? Two moles? So 2 times 22.4, how many moles of this does that represent? Three. Three moles. How many moles of hydrogen does this represent? Hmm? 
Divide that by 22.4, right? I'm not asking you to do even any mental math with a calculator on your desk, right? Nine, right? How about here? Hmm? Twelve. Twelve? 134.4 divided by 22.4 is 12. Two? Two times 22.4 20, plus 22.4 equals 134.4? I said 12. What is it? I said 12. What did you say? I was the one who said 12. Oh, okay. Because I added the two. I understand. I understand. I'm going to get there in a second. I'm going to get there in a second. All right, what about mass? What's the mass of this? What's the mass of that? What's the mass of three moles of nitrogen? Come on, guys. 28 times 3. What is it? What is it? 84. What about 9 moles of hydrogen? 54. 54? 86 times 9. No. How many moles? There's 9 moles there. What's the mass of one mole of the hydrogen? One. No. You made the same mistake I told you to be careful of. Hydrogen. Hydrogen gas. Diatomic, remember? Two. 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 So what is it? Eighteen. Right? You get it? Confusing, isn't it? But not, but not that complicated. What about this? Six moles of that. 17 times 6. Yeah. What is it? 102. That's it. Right? Easy? I mean, not easy, but it's a puzzle. It's a puzzle. It's just all math. Yes, it's all math. You could call it that, but it's not all math. It's a lot of chemistry. Yeah, we're kind of concentrating though on the math, aren't we? But there are a lot of chemistry things here. Okay, let's do this now. Let's say, let's do this. Let's do another one. And I'll let you do this by yourself. Okay. With that one, you got to be able to do them all. Okay, do them all. Okay. So let's just review how to do this, and I'm going to shut this off. I'll come back and we'll fill it, fill it in. Okay. You write your equation. You put in your mass masses. You put in your volumes. You have your moles, obviously, in the balance. You go to work. Simple. Snap. And part three, stoichiometry. They're working diligently.